Now, basal ganglia are basically classified or grouped in two ways. There is traditional grouping of classification or component and there is clinical clinical grouping or classification of basal ganglia. Now, when we talk about that traditional uh, classification of basal ganglia, it includes which structures? I will just draw rapidly. Now, you have to tell me what I am drawing. What is it? Yes. What is this? Lentiform, nucleus. This is putamen. This is putamen. This is globus plidus. Globus plidus. Is it right? Then, yes. More laterally, there was a gray matter here. What was this? Yes. Clostrum. Very good. And there was another piece of gray matter here. You remember your friend? What was this? Quadrate. Right? And then what was this? Yes. Amygdaloid body. Now these structures are considered traditionally basal ganglia. Traditionally, we think that quadrate nucleus, lentiform nucleus, which consists of putamen and globus plidus, and with that, medulloid body and claustrum. These are the structures which are considered traditionally basal ganglia. Is that right? But now, most of the neurologists are following clinical concept. Clinically, what are the structures which are considered basal ganglia? I will repeat it now. Of course, lentiform nucleus is included. Putamen with globus, plidus, right? Uh, here, if we cut, what was the structure? What it? You know, it was going like this and like that, right? And with these structures, functionally, there are related these two nuclei. What is this? Subthalami and what are these? Substantia nigra. So, subthalami here. Right? And then, what is here? Substantia. Yes. Nigra. Actually, clinically, these are the structures which are considered basal ganglia. Right? Quadrate with the lentiform nucleus and what are these subthalami and what are these structures substantial nigra now why we have put these structures with this clinically because there are special connections between the lentiform nucleus and subthalamus and lentiform nucleus and substantial nigra because functionally they make a uh, one unit and there are very important connections in between them. So now the modern concept is that these structures should be considered basal ganglia and associated nuclei. And colostrum and the medullary body, they will be, now this, they are studied separately. Especially medullary body is studied with the limbic system. Is that right? Which is concerned with emotions and memory and some other things. Is that right? So clinically, what are the basal ganglia? Lentiform nucleus, corded nucleus, and these two basic structure. Now, another thing. There are a few more terms in which we should be very clear. Now, now onward, I will draw only left side of the structures, right? Oh, already you know this is putamen, and you know this is globus plidus. Globus plidus is again divided into two parts. This is external part which is laterally and this is internal part which is, yes, medially. Is that right? So globus plidus, as I can put it here, that it has medial most part and lateral part, right? Medial and lateral division, right? This is globus plidus lateral or globus plidus external. 
and this is globus pallidus internal. Why I am stressing this? Because connections and functions of these two are different. Within few minutes, we'll see. Is that right? Now, I will draw not the whole chordate. Now onward, it is just a section of its head here. So this is your rat head. What is the head? Chordate. Is that right? Now, out of these structures, which structure is called corpus striatum? Uh, which structure is called corpus striatum? Because we have to get some terms now clear. Uh, you think? Okay, let me tell you. All of them are corpus striatum. Before you tell me new things. All of them are corpus striatum. Let's put it in this way for classification purpose. That we put it here. Quadrate. Right? What is this here? Lentiform nucleus has one component, putamen, which is, and here it is globus pallidus. Actually, all these structures together are called, yes, all three structures, or all three structures, they are called corpus striatum. Corpus striatum. Right? But there is more, there is another term which is called just striatum. Or neostriatum. That terms include quadrate with putamen. Quadrate, right, with putamen. These two structures together, they are called neostriatum. Neostriatum. Is that right? And this structure. Is called globus pallidus or paleostriatum or globus pallidus. Now, again, coordinate with putamen, why they are grouped together as neostriatum? And now, onward in the lecture, when I say only striatum, it means I'm collectively talking about coordinate and putamen. But if I mention corpus striatum, then I'm including all three things. Is that right? So, why these are put together? Uh, quadrate nucleus and putamen because they have similar connections, they have similar type of neurotransmitters, right? Structurally and functionally, not only both of them are similar, even embryologically, they are derived in the similar way, right? Even though putamen structurally is well connected with globus pallidus, but functionally, it is, it should be grouped with what is this? Quadrate. So, quadrate nucleus with the putamen, they are called neostriatum. So, this is our, what is this? Neo striatum. Now, as I told you in the beginning, putamen with what is this? Globus pallidus together in the sections, it looks like a lens, right? Surrounded by internal and external capsule. So both of them together are also called lentiform nucleus. So, what are the components of lentiform nucleus? Lentiform nucleus include, yes, putamen with Globus pallidus, lentiform nucleus. Is that right? Now I will ask you. If I say, what are the components of lentiform nucleus? Yes, putamen with globus pallidus. If I say, what is neostriatum? That is coordinate with putamen. And if I say, what is corpus striatum? That include coordinate putamen and globus pallidus. Or Corpus striatum is quadrate with the lentiform nucleus. Am I clear?